check it out, guys. I wanted to 3D print some gifts for my family this holiday season. I knew my sister's boyfriend's a huge sports fan, so I decided to print him an almost full-size football helmet decorated to his favorite NFL team. What I didn't know about this print, however, is that this was going to take many days and many nights of printing, as well as a lot of trial and error that we're going to talk about right now. What's up, guys? Big Jano here. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Before we begin, guys, I just want to welcome everybody that's new to this community and let you guys know, if you haven't already, please go subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out, and it really makes me appreciate you guys. Also, if you enjoyed this video, go hit that like button. Also, hit the notification bell while you're up there so you know when new content's coming, and you'll be the first to know. Also, reminding you guys that I am a variety streamer on Twitch as well. Come check me out there. I like to 3D print, show off what I'm working on, and even game from time to time. So come check me out there, guys. Let's have some fun together. Also, if you haven't followed me on Twitter yet, go follow me on Twitter. I let you guys know when I drop new YouTube content as well as when I go live on Twitch. Links to both of these in the description below. All right, so when I first started this print, I thought this was going to be a great way to show off my 3D printing capabilities as well as my printer's capabilities and really see what my machine's really capable of as well as create something that I've always kind of wanted for myself as a life-size football helmet with a face mask and everything. It's, it was a couple weeks of planning, but um, I was really excited for what I was about to do and hopefully we're going from there. Given the time crunch this holiday season, I decided to find a 3D model of my own I went on GrabCat and found one courtesy of Mike Davis. It's a really nice 3D model of a football helmet with the face mask as separate individual parts. I was able to download both those in SolidWorks. I used the football helmet as the model for this print. And then I took the face mask and redesigned one myself based off his geometries, but it gave the face mask a different shape and some different patterns on the front to make it even cooler. Once I was able to download the files, I was able to import them into SolidWorks because these were SolidWorks native files. And then I was able to re-save them as a step file to open up in Fusion 360. From there, I was able to open it up in Fusion 360 so I could redesign the face mask to give it a different design than what the original designer had. I wanted to do the V-shape pattern in the front of the face mask because most football players have really cool face mask patterns nowadays. And I just wanted to continue the trend. Once I was done finishing the designs in Fusion 360, I was able to set them up in Cura to get them sliced and get them ready to print. Overall, the helmet itself was gonna take four and a half days to print, while the face mask would take a little over 24 hours time. These are the longest print times I've encountered since getting my 3D printer, so you can say I was a little bit nervous trying to get this set up and was worried that if anything went wrong in this time, that I would have to start all over and waste days printing. So I figured I'd first start off with the face mask. I figured that would take only 25 hours to print. Let me see how this goes, and then we'll work from there. And that's when the fun started happening. So this was the result of the first iteration of the face mask. And as you can see, it didn't go so well. Yay. I also noticed on the broken part that the infill was very, very brittle. I originally had the infill set at 25%. However, I noticed that was a little bit too thin for the inside as I really wanted this face mask to be sturdy enough so that way I can assemble it to the helmet without any issues, as well as when I shipped it, it wouldn't have any damages. So I bumped up the infill to 75% and that gave me plenty of strength for at least the second iteration. I also made some adjustments to my print speeds as well as my retraction settings to avoid a little bit of the stringing I was getting as well as to slow down my prints and really make sure the features are getting printed and cooling in an ample amount of time. However, you'll find out real quickly why my retraction setting adjustment is where I shot myself in the foot even more. So I set my retraction settings at eight millimeters for 50 millimeters per second speeds. And what I ended up finding out is that it ended up clogging my hot end. What was happening was that too much molten material was getting retracted back up into the cold section of the hot end. And that was causing a clog in the nozzle and the hot end. 
And ultimately, I noticed about 10 hours in that the print started to fail when there was no more material coming out of the nozzle. So at that point, I had to clean out my nozzle and clean out the hot end. Thankfully, the hot end was able to be saved. I did, however, have to replace the PTFE tubing as it got uh, pretty burned with uh, residue and material left over in there. So I swapped out some Capricorn tubing and I was able to get back up and running. I made the adjustment this time for five millimeters of length with 30 millimeter per second speed for traction settings. And that made a world of difference. And it actually was probably the best retraction settings I've ever set for my printer to give me probably the best quality prints that I've gotten to date. At this point, I decided to go into a different direction with the color of the face mask. I then swapped out the material I was using for some Xylotech white PLA. 25 hours later and it was looking good. There were a couple small imperfections here and there, but I was able to fill those in with some filler glue and sand it down. Notice the blue clips on the helmet? Yeah, we'll get back to that in a little bit because there's something else with this face mask that we came across that had to be fixed later, but we'll get there. Anyway, it was now time for the bigger of the two prints, the helmet itself. After I sliced this, I realized this was gonna take almost five days to print and almost an entire roll of filament. I was kind of nervous in seeing how this was all gonna play out, so I set up my camera and connected it to my stream on Twitch. By the way, that link's in the description below if you guys wanna check me out. And I set it up and watched the stream while at work while it was 3D printing. Um, I was just multitasking. Don't say it wasn't working, I was multitasking. I could have set up OctoPrint on uh, Raspberry Pi, However, I was a little short on time trying to get this all set up and I was running out of time to get this printed anyway, so I figured I'd at least be able to watch it. Unfortunately, if anything were to happen, I would not be able to stop the print during its time if it was failing, um, but at least being able to see it would give me at least a sense of security knowing that it was in good hands and it wasn't going to burn my apartment down. <laughs> I do plan on covering OctoPrint using a Raspberry Pi in the future on this channel, so st stick around for that. I don't know when that will happen, but it will, eventually. So after waiting days and days and days, I finally got the helmet to print and it came out fantastic. I used Matte Forge Gray Matte PLA for the print and it looks very clean. I am super impressed with it. I did notice once I took this print off the printer that there was a lot of support material that printed around the center of the printer near the crown of the helmet. Ultimately, I probably could have removed this support material altogether and it could have saved me some time and material when I actually printed this. So that's something to keep in mind for future multi-day prints is that make sure if you don't need supports in certain areas that you can remove them using the Cura slicer or whatever slicer you use. Uh, saving material and time can really make a difference when you're making multi-day prints and it can help you uh, become a better 3D printer in general. Just something to look out for. At this point, all I had to do was 3D print the blue clips that attach themselves to the face mask so I can assemble the face mask to the helmet. These were printed with Matter Hackers Royal Blue Build PLA. So you would think all I have to do is assemble the face mask to the helmet and be on my merry way? Well, not exactly. I did run into one other issue that caused me to stop what I was doing and have to take a step back when making this large 3D print. And at this point, this was just defeating me very, very much inside. You're probably thinking to yourself, this one looks a lot better. However, I noticed when I went to go assemble this to the actual helmet itself, that those blue clips didn't line up with the holes on the helmet for the hardware to go through. I then realized when I designed the face mask that these two crossbars right here and here gave me issues and they ended up interfering with where the clip should be and thus having to go back and redesign it. So that was a fun problem to discover a day before I was flying home for the holidays. So in record time, I had to print another face mask. This is now number three I had to print. And I had to make sure that the two crossbars on the sides where they were located were removed. And then I ended up putting a crossbar right down the middle of the center line of the face mask. So now you had room for those two clips to line up with the holes on the helmet so the hardware could go through, no problem. Once that was solved, I was in the home stretch. I could feel it. 
I was able to find some hardware lying around the house to use as fasteners, sanded down the prints a little bit, and then online I went on eBay and found some 3M printed stickers with the logos themselves from the favorite NFL team. If you haven't figured it out already, it's Buffalo. And sure enough, the print was finally done. Yes, I was so excited when this was finally done, just because it was a lot of work for a short amount of time that maybe next time I won't wait as long before Christmas to uh, actually start this. Let's recap what we learned about all this. Well, one thing, slow and steady printing is always ideal when printing multi-day prints, as printing too fast or with too fast of settings usually doesn't end well and makes things not as detailed and more gross. Also, I highly recommend you are very really familiar with your 3D printer before you navigate into multi-day prints, just so you've had some time to go know the ins and outs of your printer and get to know your printer very well. Maybe take it out to dinner, maybe buy it a movie ticket or something. Just really get to know your printer and see what it likes and dislikes. That way you guys will be more synced when you actually try to go with multi-day printing. What? You what? I hope you guys know I was kidding about that, right? But seriously guys, get to know your 3D printer and really understand what your printer is capable of before you navigate into those waters, before you make mistakes that could potentially damage your printer permanently. Also let's remember that things will happen and things unexpectedly will happen that need to be fixed and addressed. So make sure you give yourself some time to plan around these bigger projects, especially if it's right around the holidays and you're printing other gifts for family members, make sure you give yourself enough time to do these. Um, and again, if you run into issues, take a deep breath, calm down, understand what's going on, and get right back on the saddle. That's that's all it's about. Also, don't forget, guys, that you can adjust the support settings in your slicer. If you can print something with less supports that can save you material and time, go for it. Any little bit of time you can save and any material you can save while printing multi-day prints will just get you that much closer to the end goal that much quicker. I'm glad I went through this experience because now I can print multi-day prints with a little bit more confidence and now I have a few other sets of tips and tricks that I will use for the next multi-day print I use or print or do or whatever. This has given me a great guide on what to expect with multi-day printing and I hope you guys get something out of this and I hope you guys take a tip or two home with you and make your multi-day prints even better than they were before. With that being said, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed making this for you. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video, as well as let me know if you guys have any other advice for me on multi-day prints and 3D printing in general. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And if you do like this video, guys, go hit that like button up above. And if you're new to the community again, please go subscribe to the channel. It helps the channel out, and I greatly appreciate you guys for it. Seriously, go hit that subscribe button. And also hit the notification bell while you're over there, so you guys always know when new content's coming. Reminder as well, I'm also on Twitch and Twitter. Go check me out. Link's in the description below. Come hang out with me. Let's have some fun together. And thank you guys once again for coming in this video. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, keep doing it big. Take care, guys. So check it out guys, I wanted to 3D print a holiday gift for one of my family members this season. Well, he's uh, my sister's boyfriend, but nonetheless, he's still family. That sounds awful. <laughs> oh no, I can't put that in there. <laughs> <laughs>